for 2023 that should be good uh on the date so we have these three items so we've got eric music and music stuff store which have these uh billable items that are connected to them so when i make an invoice for these items it should give me a reference to pull in these to the invoice now the way we created these if i drill down on this item and just take a look at it we've got a spend money type of form a spend money form and if i go up top and say options up top and i want to uh, edit the transaction just to take a look at it in its edited form we then assigned some of these items uh, assigned to a, a customer so we assigned some of these items to a customer this way and that's how we created i'm going back these or these billable settings when usually we just have an expense form and we don't have actually inventory items in this case we assigned these inventory items so now when i pull it into the the invoice i should get a reference trying to pull these two in but it might try to pull them in at cost as opposed to try to pull them in at the sales price and that's where this thing you have to be quite careful when you're using this tool so and we'll we'll touch on this tool again when we see it for other kind of billable things uh possibly for like gasoline or other expenses that you have that you want to pull into an invoice to charge a client for so let's go back to the first tab and i'm going to hit the drop down and say let's say we're going to make an invoice another invoice and this is going to be for eric music we'll say eric music tabbing over and notice what popped up these two billable expenses can be added so that pop-up comes in because it's connected as we saw in this report up top i'm going to change the date and let's bring the date back on down to jan uh 23 let's say jan 23 and i'll say the due date is going to be uh a month later on uh feb 23 about and then we'll say it's an invoice uh standard okay 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 and then let's take in let's pull in this billable stuff so here's the two items i can select one at a time if i wanted to just pull in one of them but i'm going to pull them both in so i'm going to select them both so add as one item or add items so i don't want to combine them together typically so i'm going to add them as two line items i would like them to show up as two line items down here i'm going to add them and uh so there we have it now notice that everything looks basically normal here because you have the items that are populated as we pulled in these expenses remember that if you did this with something that didn't have items like inventory items meaning you paid for just gasoline and you charged it to automobile expense and then you wanted to pull those into the invoice then then you wouldn't really have the items that would be pulling up it would be just pulling in that that expense item so so these items look like they're doing the right thing but it's still pulling in the cost it didn't switch it over to the sales price so it connected them but it doesn't have the right price amount on it so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, everything looks good. I'm going to have to adjust this by saying this is going to be the EPSH. If I do EPSH here, I can see that it should actually be $400. And I'm going to change that up top to $400. So you can see it's not like a perfect system. So you ha you'd have to be very careful if you're going to... And then this is an ELP. An ELP. And I, I can see that that is... Five hundred dollars on on the sales price, so the ELP is five hundred, and then I'm gonna delete this transaction here. It also didn't pull in the sales tax, so I'm gonna make them both taxable. Uh, tax tax on the sales, and then tax on the sales. So. Uh, so, so you can see you can kind of do that with the inventory and it pulls it in, but it's not a perfect type of system. So you want to be kind of careful with those uh, billable items and we'll take a look. There's other kind of issues with it when you use the billable items for other things like, like other expenses that you're paying for to pull them into an invoice that we'll talk about in future presentations. But we want to pro point out some of the pros and cons of the tool.
Okay, so now what's gonna happen when we record this? Well, it's an invoice, so it's gonna increase accounts receivable for the full 30,450. And then the other side's gonna go to the revenue account. Hopefully it's gonna properly assign it to the revenue account because we're, we still have the items that pulled over. So that should give it the indication of where it should go. But that's only for the 4,000 and the 25,000, not including the sales tax, 1,450. The sales tax should be pulling into the, to the liability account of the taxes payable and inventory should be going down. Hopefully it can still track the inventory properly for the amount that was there before because that was the cost that was pulled in from when we paid for the inventory. And because we're using the item, it should be able to decrease the inventory by the cost amounts. And then the other side should go to the cost of goods sold, the expense related to us selling the inventory, the net impact on net income should be the sales amount minus the cost of goods sold. And we should have the sub ledger for accounts receivable impacted because it's gonna be going for Eric Music uh, is gonna have the accounts receivable and the inventory sub ledger tracking by units should also be impacted by this as well. And the billable report should go back down because we pulled these billable items uh, in and have used them now. So let's go ahead and approve it and see if that is indeed what happens. So we'll save and approve uh, complete account field. Uh, it's not, and, and notice it didn't even pull in the account field even though I had the item here. So that's interesting. So it's gonna, but in any case, it's gonna to go to the sales. We're gonna to go to sales and sales. So hopefully it's still pulled in the inventory tracking properly and uh, the cost of goods sold and, and, so, and so on. So we'll check it out. And so we'll say save it and it's good to go balance sheet and update it. And let's check out what happened here. If I go into the accounts receivable and drill down to the source documents or the general ledger report type thing, there it is. Here's our receivables for the full 30,450. And so that's for the full amount, including the sales tax.